You're listening to the Slow Ride Podcast. Bites, advice, and rumors straight from the source. The Slow Ride Podcast.com and on Twitter at the Slow Ride Pod. Hello and welcome to the 260th episode of the Slow Ride Podcast. This is Tim in hot and muggy Orlando, Florida. Hey, this is Matt. Uh, where am I? Beautifully tepid Minneapolis. Oh, yeah, I guess so. But where am I? What, what's going on, you guys? Well, it's what's good to have here? you back. Wait, what? <laughs> we just called you uh, and we're ambushing you. Uh, this is a podcast. This is Spencer in Boston, Massachusetts. And welcome oh. to the Slow Ride Podcast, little guy. You're back. Oh. Well, the reason we the reason oh. we called you, little guy, is because um, neither Spencer oh. and I watch bike racing. And there is this one bike race that you're the one to always watch. And that was the Classico um, San Sebastian. So it was only natural that we called oh, you. Oh, yeah. I always watch that. Well, I only watch, I mean, not only, but I mean, I, I have a thing for races with hats. Yeah, that's fair. Big yeah, hats. That's fair. That, that's big hats. The bigger the hat, the more and the bike race. We I can't watch. wait to discuss that. But did, little guy, we're also going to be talking about some mountain bike racing. Um, and then mm-hmm. uh, obviously the people have been on the edge of their seat for our immediate analysis of the Tour de France mm-hmm. and what happened this past month in, uh, oh. you know, in France yeah. and the, the outcome he, is it the death of British cycling? <laughs> and I think that we need to right. address this off the top of the show. Um, little guy, you're here, Spencer. Mm-hmm. I mean, it has been drastic times for our single British listener. Um, wondering, is this the end of, um, the reign? Is this the end of the kingdom? You know, Boris Johnson comes in, he's the uh, new prime minister with the Boris bikes and G T- G Thomas and, uh, Chris Froome are nowhere to be found. Um, on the top step of the uh, podium in France. It's 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 tough days. Oh, well. It's tough times out there. You know, yeah. people are just gonna have to buckle down and pick themselves up, and um, you know, sight carry on, keep calm. Um, carry on. You know, I mean, Sky still won, so not all hope is lost, right? Yeah. Well, this new upstart team called Ineos mm. won. Uh, Never heard of them. I got to I got to say guys, um I I believe gave a slow ride podcast guarantee that it was going to be G Thomas that um won the race. Um, we're adamant. On our Let It Ride adamant podcast, I put it. almost all of our points on Garrett Thomas for the win. <laughs> and it was a little known rider named uh, Bernal from uh, Colombia that took took the victory. Who could have predicted? Who thought? I yeah, who could have predicted? Nobody could have predicted. I don't think British cycling is in any trouble. They're a nation that's picked. Them they probably have a. Uh, they probably have a uh, pursuit to a win or something, right? We'll go back to the velodrome and focus on there. Yeah. Um. So, little guy, Spencer, yeah. the tour is yeah. over. What's the uh? What's the takeaway here for me? Pretty awesome tour to watch. But well, we need yeah, to no, talk about that hang stage. On, let's, before we get into the actual nitty gritty of the tour, Which stage? let's address the big issue that's on the tip of everyone's lips. It's going to be the headline of every cycling magazine uh, for their August issues that are about to drop any moment. Was this the greatest tour in recent history because it was so close? Your take. Yes, no. 50-50 shot here. Are you right? Yes, no. What do you got? No, it is not the most greatest tour of recent uh, history. Okay, little guy, what's your uh, what's your answer? <laughs> oh well, since I know the answer, it was the greatest tour in recent memory. Recent ding, memory ding, only ding, goes ding. back three years. <laughs> Wait, is recent yes. memory only three years? Little guy is moving on to round two of uh, this game sure. show. Um, oh wait. I thought this was a podcast. Man, you guys, I really don't know where I am. <laughs> yeah, right sorry now. to uh, kind of sideswipe you like this, but um, yeah. So what, like Tim, I don't know what you're thinking. This was the most exciting Grand Tour in 
well, Tour de France in the recent history because it wasn't dominated by yeah. one person start to finish more or less. Uh, like the past, I don't know, 15 editions have been. Um, <laughs> Fla- Floyd Landis accepted, of course. Um, what, what in your mind makes this not worthy of that title? Well, I'm just thinking of my the emotional roller coaster and just okay. depre- immediate depression I went into when Jan Ulrich crashed on the time trial. But uh, we, you know, I'm I'm gonna go back to two thousand. What is that? Two thousand three, four, three? three. Yeah, like I mean, three. that one was it. Like right when I was getting into racing, <laughs> that's like, yeah, that that one's gonna be tough to beat just because I'm old. Sure, this is probably the second greatest tour for sure. But I'm going to say, on. though, that tour, while very exciting, really was between two people, Lance and Jan. So, but this was also let only me, between let two people. Let me put people. it this way. Everyone <laughs> out there thought Pino oh, had a chance to win this race. That's how yeah, wide that open was it was. Sad. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to celebrate how sad that no, was. No, right? he was like, in great was... form. We're not celebrating the sadness, yeah. but you can respect he, the it. The race was so wide open that... Literally anybody could have won. Like going into week three, nobody had any idea what was going on. Julian Alaphilippe could have won this race. Was he in anyone's top ten list of tour uh, predictions? No, I just no. I just gotta say though, like I hear where you're coming from. It was a great tour for the excitement, the fact Chryswick was there, but there was the um. I'm thinking of the complete meal. When I, when I look at these types of things, a, right? Like an Olive Garden This tour thing? for the first two and a half weeks was fantastic uh-huh. until they cancel the stage, but yet still give the results at the top of the mountain. Like they should have just thrown out that entire stage. Probably. With the, I mean, they, they cancel the stage the right, yeah, no, listen, right. they cancel the stage for the right wh- reason, yeah. <coughs> right? Landslide, whatever. But those guys, whatever. they got screwed for the ones that didn't know that was the finish line at the end. They wouldn't have let him go. Like Chryswick sat up like there's and then they had like the weird timing thing where they like screwed Chryswick out of five seconds until the team pro like that they included that time from that strip in what was already the greatest what you guys are arguing tour of recent memory just do it the next day have the fireworks the next day that let's let's watch Alaphilippe collapse emotionally on a day that mattered instead he already knew you know like it was just I I wasn't very stoked on it yeah I, I I could see that I mean, it was a letdown, but what? I don't there, think there was, was a, a good answer, answer little guy, the and the 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 answer is no, no, no. cancel the result of that stage. It does. It didn't happen. Like it sucks. Uh, Mother Nature came through. Global warming happens. There's a landslide. We need to cancel the race. But I mean, to to count that stage is is ridiculous in my opinion. And I agree. Um, I agree, Tim. But you know. does that or does that mm. not? add to the excitement and make that one of the greatest no. tours in recent history. <laughs> it's sure it's one of the greatest tours of recent history, but you know, like little guy, you, you made a really good point on your guest appearance on the last podcast and you better watch how you answer this if you want to come <laughs> back again. But uh, <laughs> little guy, this, um, uh, like you said, like there was a time when we would get really excited if the tour, like winner was within five minutes, like we would, believe that there was a chance that Froome or Lance was gonna oh, yeah. you know win uh or was gonna like falter at the last moment and you know we we did have chaos at the end um and then this one right everyone was really close but it's two teammates that's what takes it away from me you had Thomas and Bernal and they kind of like just threw like if Ala Philippe was able to keep it together and maybe attack on the final day and get the time bonus at the line like Vinokorov did that one time um, on the Champs Elysees like yeah. that's what I want to see I want to see some bike racing I don't want to see a parade on the last yeah. day that makes it better <laughs> you're mad about the last I'm not, the last I'm mad day about the last really four days except Nibali winning a, a stage that progressed like molasses yeah. I slow I like <laughs> I I went out on a limb I'm like Sarah. I can't do anything today because this stage, it's only going to be like an hour and a half, but I need to focus because fireworks are going to start. Mm-hmm. By the way, if there was ever a single stage where the Tour de France should have done that Formula One start that they tried last year, it was probably the day that it was only like shortened down to 54 kilometers at the start and just had them go 
but whatever. I'm not an expert. I'm just a podcaster. But then <laughs> that stage was just like so boring. Nibali wins. Sure. Fantastic. But come on. Yeah. Give me some fireworks, guys. Yeah. I think everyone was empty, though. I mean, that's that's the same problem that the Giro runs into when they do these, like, four back-to-back days of the hardest climbs in the world. By the fourth day, there's no bike race anymore. It's just a group ride where everyone's like, True. I can't do anything. Yeah. I mean, I agree. That last stage sort of was a letdown. Oh, a letdown. Okay, so so <laughs> yeah. that's that's one more strike on this argument that it is the greatest tour of recent memory. But this is only because it's clear in your mind. I don't remember the penultimate day in the 2011, you know, tour. I probably was bummed out by that, too. It probably involves Bolzler <laughs> sliding farther down the rankings, you know. And then he didn't attack into Paris, so <sighs> I was bummed about that, but I still look back and realize Do you guys think we'll ever see a GC hopeful attack into Paris? Ever? I hope like, so. Oh my was, god! How it awesome was that forty-five be? seconds to Ala Philippe, wasn't it? Uh, I feel yeah. like that is an amount of time that a uh, well, one-day classics Fletch Wallone type specialist could take. And now I know the route into Paris mm-hmm. is pan flat, and it's tough to get some time there. But you got quick step. They know how to break up a, a peloton. Like we know this. Yeah. Could it have happened? Was this the year that it mm-hmm. should have happened? Could he have done it for France? See- so are you saying, Spencer, like just basically throwing out both that Friday and Saturday, like if he only had a 45 second deficit going into the final day, like would Philippe have had a chance? Yeah, like to you, win? N- you look back, you look over your shoulder, you're in a bike race. Let me let me frame yeah. it this way. You're in a bike race. It's the biggest one in the world. You look over your shoulder, the guy who's beating you by a marginal amount of seconds is drinking champagne from his team car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you just attack. I, that would be and your awesome. Team blocks. I, so, I, I think I think if it was within forty five seconds, Ala Philippe could pull it off. You got to think about like it would be like a circuit race, right? Because you're on the Champs Elysees, oh. so you'd look to your left and you'd see the peloton. So, so like you'd good. be kind of at a disadvantage. Oh. But maybe you can really. Um, well, you know, I'm sure Quickstep could organize some kind of like. Yeah. Roadblock to go into that tunnel underneath the team Louvre, time trial, little you know, mini team kind. time trial off the front, you know, like yeah. uh, it, yeah. in well, my it's lifetime, hammer, it's I like want to see race. this happen in my lifetime. I want the Tour de France to be raced for twenty one stages. Right now, it is only raced for twenty, and it's a well, disappointment. I'm not getting. It was in nineteen eighty nine. I paid for the whole seat. Raced. I'm only using the edge, but I want to see all yeah. twenty one stages be raced. I think the only way we're going to get it is if we have another rider like Vino up there, who at that point in his career, Vino was already kind of enemy number one for a lot of people. Like we all knew he was dirty. He couldn't do anything. I think at that point that would have made the segment of the Peloton that didn't like him, the segment of fans that didn't like him. You know, it's not like people are going to be like, I can't believe Vino would do that. We already knew that he blood dope with his dad's blood or whatever. So the fact that he would steal a couple seconds from uh, what? The guy, I, I got the, no, another guy Tyler. turned out to, to be a joker. Was it Levi? No, it was okay. Levi. Was it? You know, but, you know, he spoke English really well. So <laughs> it's cool. Um, so <laughs> I just, I don't know who plays that who plays that part in the Peloton. Uh, I don't know it's who's that bad it. guy. Um, moving on. <laughs> yeah, maybe, but I mean, we would have a hard time. We would be on here... Obviously, we'd be yeah. on your excuse yeah. his actions. <laughs> I can't ever Valverde see that. Fan that we are. All right, mo- um, moving on a little bit else. Um, you know, we d- I do wanted to spring up roller derby, our favorite fantasy cycling game. There was not a livestock related crash. We were or dog related crash. Uh. We were very close. There was a cow that tipped over a motorcycle on the course. That was uh, that proved to be very <laughs> exciting. Um, I really enjoyed uh, seeing that. Some other things I have in my notes here is that um, apparently Lance Armstrong has found a way to continue to make a boatload of money off the Tour de France, not only showing up on NBC Sports coverage, which I'll get to in a second, but his podcast apparently brings in like a million dollars in revenue. So everyone, you're just continuing to support that guy. Uh, Yeah. Million bucks. Yeah. I made at least two. Million bucks last year, million bucks this year for his podcast uh, about a sport from which he's banned for life, which 
is a bummer. Um, I will, I will just put out there a little caveat. We do not make a million dollars. I'm not going to disclose what we make. It is not a million dollars. It is, it has a lot less zeros. (laughs) Well, there's one zero I'll put, let's just put it that way. But there's there's one less zero. But I feel we have a, a significant reach, um, especially into apparently Great Britain. Yeah. Um, but who knows if that's going to continue with the death of British cycling that has happened. Now, um, something else I want to say on this NBC Sports coverage. I was at hockey the other night. Um, got to, a couple of uh, my teammates are into cycling, uh, passive fans, because in July there's not much else. You know, there's not much baseball. You know, it's like baseball's the only thing on, and. Uh, they were watching a lot and they were also in disbelief that Lance was allowed to be on there and that NBC had like completely sold their soul to put Lance on the show. And I found that amazing. And these are, these guys are big. They love Phil Liggett. Like they're the reason why Phil Liggett still exists on the broadcast. Sure. And yeah. they were angry that Lance was on there. And I found that to be a pretty interesting take because Good. it's basically like they're calling out NBC sports for like, why? Like, we need to move on from this. And then NBC sports like keeps filling it. And then, you know, Oh, let's just call in the big guns. This is bringing Lance for his critique of what's happening during the stage and act like nothing has happened. And I thought there was a ban on this. I'm surprised the ASO, which awards this contract um, is going to continue to allow NBC sports to do this. Like you got to think that that's got to be a, um, like some kind of violation, like at some point that's going to come up in negotiation. I mean, granted, we don't have an outdoor life network or a, a, a versus channel to um, bid against it. Right. Uh, NBC sports, but it does it's seem a little weird. weird. It's really weird. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, you're but. banned from, for life from the sport, but you're banned by the UCI, which has what sort of authority over anything really? Nothing. So I think that's where the gray area comes in, you know? Yeah. Um, well, it's, it's interesting anyway, to hear um, the layman uh, being upset as well, not just the, the hardcore cycling fans. Um, exactly. Yeah. I thought that, that was just interesting to hear from, from that. And then um, some other things that kind of stuck out. Uh, Rohan Dennis, uh, just the, the day before the time trial, the explosion of just walking away from the tour. Um, that was that, that made the day somewhat Weird. interesting along with like the Tony Martin, like run the dude off the road move. And then was it, who was it? Row? Like who's the one that came back and punched it him on the back row. of the head? Like, you're just like, what the hell happened? Yeah. Well, and there was uh there was some video earlier okay, in the yeah. week about with um yellow lotto bumping Chad Haga off the road and keeping yeah. him off in the dirt as well. Um they were just uh very adamant about policing the front of the Peloton, I guess. Um I don't know. I don't know what to say are about they, that they, situation. Are, is it okay to still be a fan of Yellow Lotto? They're kind of bullies out there. They got Wout, so you're kinda of cool with it, but then like they I did see the Chad Haga <laughs> uh one as well and yeah, Spencer. I'm a little curious. Yeah. That. I uh, I don't know. I don't know what the what they're feeding those guys, no. but um, I, I I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is all ketones from uh, <laughs> what I've yeah. heard. Just bags of ketones. All right. So now, with the tour, also means it is silly season, right? Everything going in because everything resolves revolves around this. We'll get to bike racing. We'll get to UCI mountain bike and all that after the jump. But I do want to get a little bit into kind of the transfer season a little bit and the destruction that is Movistar. Uh, Movistar obviously is yeah. the team that's uh, impacted the most. First, Mikel Landa going over to Bahrain, Merida. You also have um, Nairo finally throwing sense. in the towel just to become a tour stage winner. Um, bringing his brother and winner Anaconda, Anacona, over to um, yeah. Arkea, the uh, the Brayton uh, team. Is, is it? And then Movistar responds by, oh, also losing Richard Carapaz to uh, Ineos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What are they doing? And I then, don't understand how they've how they. And then Movistar is like, well, I guess we just need a Spanish cycling hope. So they go to Quick Step and take Enrique Mass Moss, sorry, who was a complete failure could have, you know, at least been respectable in the white 
Jersey competition um, wasn't uh, as good as I thought he was going to be. Ah, com- um, complete so. failure seems harsh, but. Yeah, <laughs> he still finished. He finished a Grand Tour, tour but he was <laughs> 58 minutes down on Bernal and 25 minutes down on David Gaudu yeah, he, of he Groupama. Did, it's true. He didn't have the. the I thought he'd at least get second. Yeah, exactly. That's year. that's all I'm saying. Now, here's the question. Yeah. Um, also, the other big news is you have Nibali going to Trek, and then on the women's side, listen to Brand going to Trek, which is a whole nother, like, yeah amazing factor that Trek must be the only team paying living wages uh, and respectable <laughs> wages to women professional cycling cyclists because they're getting everybody. Trek kind of like, it's really cool what they're doing. <laughs> But they're kind of becoming the the New York Yankees of women's cycling because they have all the, the uh, fantastic, great cyclists on the team. They've got a lot, seems. but I still think Bulls Doman is the uh, Yankees um, for now. Okay, and so, so Trek is the Dodgers. Yeah, and it and it almost doesn't matter <laughs> how good Bulls Doman and Trek Segafredo are when you've got Mariana Voss just out doing her thing, winning everything. Uh, anyway, that's. That's true. And, you know, Mitchelton's still there with uh, Van Bluten, right? So you still have uh, some it's, some variance. It's going to be exciting. Having race. listened to Brand go over to Trek is a also a huge one. Um, little guy, any of these uh, transfers, Silly Season, you're, on past podcasts, um, you've always been really into Silly Season. Anything that just doesn't make any sense to you? <laughs> Uh, well, the land, the land of the Bahrain makes no sense because I haven't heard about another GC guy <laughs> to Bahrain yet. So I feel like it doesn't make any sense for him to make that move. I, I mean, the Movistar thing makes no sense because if all these guys wanted sole leadership, just one of these bozos needed yeah. to just stay. Well, but isn't that what? Um, so, I mean, it is Valverde's it's Valverde team, now. Right? Yeah, I mean, like, he's thirty nine. He just signed so for two more years. Though. <laughs> I mean. I know. I, I obviously he's pretty ageless since he just accidentally rode to a top ten at the Grand at a Grand Tour at the Tour no less uh, while helping now, those other two um, letdowns. But so still, I would say the biggest shock to me is Carapaz going, and this is probably the example of um, the need for some kind of salary cap. Like I I, I want all these guys to get yeah. the money that they're worth. Yeah. But but it would be really cool if if they could tax. Yeah the heck out of Ineos <laughs> like, and share it around or something. I don't know. It's just a little strange that I love NBA free agent well, like season what? and we can't get that in cycling because you're just yeah. like, Oh, we'll just buy the competition. You're really similar to what uh, the postal team did. But now they're buying, what is Ineos they're buying a grand tour do winner next year from <laughs> they've got a zero winner. They're going to have three, the last three tour winners and a multi Volta winner on their team like what <laughs> like what are they going to do next year they've got too many tours not to mention they have Walt Poles who has obviously wanted to be a GC leader occasionally falls down before his chance but like he could be a GC leader at another team like it's crazy well I don't know. I, I don't get it why would you go I don't know why I care I, I know why Kara Press went there they paid what, did, what about the Trek men's side Spencer uh, is this the end of the Richard Richie Port experiment, or did that end on stage nine five tours ago? Uh, probably the second thing, but um, Richie, you know, he didn't have the greatest tour, but he didn't have he didn't have he a didn't bad have one. a bad he still finished eleven. No, um, he had a he had a totally what I would have expected yeah. him to have kind of nice. tour, um, which was decent, and now he's got. I think this is a good situation for him. Uh, he's got somebody to ride for. That is clear and and like clear and obviously better like better GC hope and uh, I think it's just going to help the structure of that team and raise the bar. Uh, yeah, a, a greater uh, GC hope that finished at 39th place, an hour and a half down. Um, well, wow. Richie well, Port was only 12 minutes. He didn't. Zero. He didn't. Yeah, I know. I he know. didn't have a Richie Port. I think the point. <laughs> Yeah, no, the point is now Port, the thing that Trek's been missing has been Zubeldia. Exactly. Port now can be Zubeldia. He just did a great Zubeldia impression at the tour, and now he can do the the thing that Trek used to do, which is Zubeldia just sort of slots into sixth place by accident. Port will do that next year while Nibali yes. gets like no, second good. or something. Don't discount Bauke Malima's like, career-long quest to be a Zubeldia 
Uh, he is very, but he acts. He now he's got a Grand Tour podium, and I don't think Zubelli yes. ever got a Grand Tour podium. So, because my no, boy Kobo, <laughs> that, that is very true. Well, guys, the silly season is nowhere done, near done. But uh, it is yeah. only time for us to get into uh, the prem lap, where we have pretty cool things to talk about. This is Mitch Stocker, and you're listening to the Slow Ride Pod. Today's episode brought to you by Whoop. Whoop? Whoop. Uh, Whoop.com is uh, where you can go to find out what Whoop is all about. Um, Or you can just listen to me uh, because I'm about to tell you. Whoop is a performance tool that is changing the way people track their fitness and optimize their training. It's a wrist-worn heart rate monitor. Um, Strap this thing on, connect it to an app, and it tracks what you're doing all day long. Um, It will track your sleep. It will track your rest, your recovery. It will track your heart rate um, and give you feedback based on uh, on what you're doing and uh, making sure that you are optimizing your your training and, and especially your recovery. Um, so they're on the whoop strap 3.0. Now it's got a five day battery life, which is boggles my mind. Um, it's super rad. And, uh, what I would encourage you to do is check out whoop.com. That's W H O O P.com and, uh, see what they've got on offer. And if, uh, it looks like something that you are into, use the code slow ride at checkout and save yourself 15%, uh, on a membership. And uh, that's how you will get started using Whoop and optimizing the way you train. That's right. Thanks for Whoop for their continued support. We'd also like to thank Grimper Brothers for their continued support, helping produce two wide-angle podium-specific coffee blends for uh, all of our listeners and members and supporters. What you do is you head on over to wideanglepodium.com slash coffee, and it sends you to Grimper Brothers where you can purchase either the full Schleck or Hello Cyclocross Friends, which is an espresso blend. Really great. Grimper Brothers has been with us for a while. We'd like to thank everyone that is um, going for the Grimper Brothers coffee, especially the Wide Angle Podium uh, blends. Um, It's helping support the network. And in particular, we'd love to mention that you can be on the coffee subscription plan, which allows you to get the coffee sent to you automatically. Yeah. Um, Every bag of beans that you buy uh, of Full Schleck or or Cycle Cross Friends from Grimper Brothers supports the network directly, like Tim said. Um, we've got a long ways to go before we get to a million dollars for this Tour de France, uh, but that is our goal. Um, so we need you guys to buy at least, I don't know what, 12 million bags of coffee in the next uh, week or so. That'd be great. And another thing I want to mention, thanks to all of the member supporters of the Wide Angle Podium Network. Check out Life in the Peloton. Our friend, professional cyclist Mitch Docker, had on our favorite cyclist, easily on the Mount Rushmore of Slow Ride Podcast cyclists. Like th- this guy is instant first ballot Hall of Famer for the Slow Ride Podcast. Of course, I'm talking about the great Canadian, Sven Tuft, who has been around for a long time. Um, you guys can't see it, but I have the framed Symmetrics jersey signed by Sven Tuft. Yeah. I have the signed limited edition, only one edition of the Sven Tuft covered um, comic book about Symmetrics, uh, autographed and framed. It's a great story of just overcoming adversity and just <laughs> at the last minute uh-huh. dominating everybody at a little known race called the USA the U S world cup of cycling in Richmond, Virginia. That was on NBC sports in 2005 guys. Sven tough was on the Mitch Docker podcast. 
I can't think of anything more exciting to come to the world, the Wide Angle Podium Network. Anyways, if you'd like to um, support what Mitch is doing, head over to the Wide Angle Podium or any of our other um, sister and brother shows, including Roller Derby. You can just head on over to WideAnglePodium.com. You can sign up to become a member or a supporter and choose the shows that you would like to uh, support. So if you ever want to buy us a beer, you know, just do a one-time uh, look over there. But yeah, head on over to WideAnglePodium.com. And finally, this podcast is supported by Health IQ, a life insurance company that celebrates the health conscious, including cyclists. Visit Health IQ slash WAP to learn more and get a free quote or check out their life insurance FAQ page to get your questions answered. Thanks to Health IQ for their continued support of the Slow Ride podcast and the Wide Angle Podium Network. Guys, let's get back to the show. My name is Matthew Vanderpool and I don't listen to the Slow Ride Podcast. Well guys, it is only a matter of time before we open up the Slow Ride Podcast ma- mailbag and get in a get a sweet email at the last minute with a subject line, Roberto Harras. <laughs> Mentioning Roberto Harras in last week's episode piqued my curiosity and sent me in a super tuck descent into the depths of the internet. I found out that Roberto Harras doped in the 2005 Vuelta win. Yep. I want to say that that was the the one that I chose for my World Cycling Productions draft. Wh- that his doped win was reinstated by Spain's Supreme Court in 2012, and then he got his prize money just two years ago. Huh. Even more interesting, though, his last official Wikipedia-worthy win came in the 2009 Brompton World Championships. Having retired Vuelta winners adding the Brompton to their Palmares makes me think we need to make Chris Horner aware of this. Could this be the door he needs to slide his foot into the to get into the back into the peloton? Has this race been discussed on the podcast yet? It certainly just des- deserves full treatment, if not. Um, ah. Thanks for the entertainment, Ed Merritt. Yes. So, Ed, we have talked a little bit about the Brompton. Um, we have talked a little bit about the Brompton World Championships when we were at Richmond 2015. We saw this. We saw the ties. We saw the slacks. We saw the the uh, the work um, pants uh, of people running to their bikes and unfolding to go on a ride. But I did not know Roberto Harris was a Brompton World Champion. Spencer, do you think Chris Horner could pull this off? Uh, I think he's got a, a legit shot. It could be a, a way in for him, as a, as the email suggests. Now, the the, the problem that he's going to have, and what I imagine Roberto Harris maybe had to uh, come to terms with as well, is I've been to um, <coughs> Brompton World <coughs> Championship qualifying race. Um, uh-huh. In Minneapolis, when I was still living there, uh, they had one there um, where you could qualify to win a, a free trip to London where the Worlds were that particular year, I think 2012. Um, the folding, you, you start with the bike folded up. It's a Le Mans start. Yeah. And they have to run on foot to these folded Bromptons and then unfold them and start racing. So I think if Chris can put in the work, if he can put in the time, to uh, learn how to unfold a Brompton, which Ouch. Yeah. it's not, I've tried to do it. People can do it. Like they just pick it up and it's open. Suddenly yeah. it's difficult. Like it is not the, intuitive. Uh, I've tried it several times. I remember when the, uh, the Brompton guy came by swift cycle, um, Gainesville, Florida's most famous and reputable bike 607, shop, uh, 607 yeah. West university, no longer there. <laughs> but I remember the Brompton guy came in and, uh-huh to the shop on these like little goofy wheels. And he did the whole, like he walked in the door rode like walked in the door with his bike. And then before like introducing who he was, he folded it up so damn fast. Yep. And I'm like, and then he like, so instantly your, your mind's captured and he's like, hi, I'm, you know, Steve with Brompton. And you're like, Oh, and then he handed it over and he's like, Oh, why don't you take it for a ride? Purposely not unfolding it. Yeah. It took me like 10 minutes to figure out like the pedals, the way those things yep. were. So yeah, you've got to put in the time to learn how to flick the wrist and get that so, thing going. Yeah. If, if Chris Horner wants to be Steve Brompton, he's going to have to put in some work, but if he is willing <laughs> to do it, I think that could be a way for him to be a world champion. Something that dare I say is a level above Volta champion. 
<laughs> you guys do remember that Chris Arner used to race uh, domestic U.S. cyclocross with foam on his top two. Yeah. In the bars, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm going to guess <laughs> he's going to have trouble with the Brompton. It's possible. Right. Now, you know the weirdest thing about the, uh, the Brompton uh, event that I went to? Was that I left? What? I left that event wanting a wanting Brompton. a Brompton. Oh, yeah, I yeah. totally want a Brompton. I'd love to have a Brompton. I, so cool. Bromptons are like the Gucci of the folding bikes, oh, right? Yeah. Like I don't oh, know yeah. too much about it because like you've got Dahan and oh yeah, that's, I'm sure that's garbage. It's all trash. And turn for, is it turn the other one? Except for Brompton. Dahan and Brompton's turn? the, the top those dog for sure. Ones. Those are the bike Friday. But yeah. so, so here's here's the dilemma is. I like legitimately looked into them for a while and was like, I definitely want to buy one of these. It makes so much sense in so many different ways. And then I just can't, I just can't do it. I can't wrap my head around it. I told you about there's the, um, the bike shop in St. Pete, downtown St. Pete. That is a folding bike shop only store. Yeah. And the way that they showcase their Bromptons, they have like little Ikea cubbies and every night he puts them to bed. Like he folds them up and puts them into the little cubbies. And it's a folding bike store, and um, a lot of his clientele is coming from the folks living on boats, and also that take their um, that have private jets that fly into St. Pete. So there you go. Yeah, you. Hey guys, have to be to afford a I hope. Hey guys, I hope you were fortunate enough to take in Vanderpool's performance in Val de Sol this weekend. He seems to have found his race legs if, after looking human and like gets. His final lap attack left Flukinger and Scherter happy to just be on the podium with him. It's a shame we won't get to see him in West Virginia, but at the same time, I can't wait to see how he does at the Road World Championships. Thanks for po- producing such a wonderfully entertaining pod. Marcus in Tampa, a friend of Matt in Tampa, and Matt, of course, is going to the Trek World Cup uh-huh. in Madison to hang out with all of us at the Wide Angle Podium uh, Factory. So, pretty cool. Did you guys have a chance... I do want to point out, do you ever notice all the emails come from people living in Tampa, but not Orlando? Like maybe I've just like totally polluted the water here that no one wants. They're like, oh, not that guy. That's always at the back cracking wise and the, the, the group rides Probably. before he gets dropped. Um, but anyway, uh, did you guys get to watch any of the mountain biking? Because I, I think that this would be a good jumping off point to some of the things that happened this weekend. So of course, as mentioned, Matthew Vanderpool takes the victory in both the short track and Olympic distance um, racing. I did not get to watch the mountain. No, didn't. didn't I can't wait to go over to Red Bull. I have not also. So unfortunately, we're not going to have so much coverage. But I do want to point out that I really want to watch the women's race Mm -hmm. because PFP wins by a second over Yolanda Neff. And I kind of want to see that because PFP winning is pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, especially, uh, although it's not in France, but she won in Italy. Also, I always love watching the short track. Um, I want to see what Matthew Vanderpool did. Cause whenever he puts in those attacks, it is always something worthy of a, uh, you know, YouTube dissection. Um, I, uh, it's so great to see. And then also, um, Yolanda Neff taking a two second win in her race. That also was a whole world cup weekend in Tritino, uh, uh, Italy, because you also had the downhill. So Laurie Greenland wins the men's downhill. And then, uh, Marine Caribou wins over Tracy Hanna in a, um, sadly depleted field for the, uh, women's, uh, downhill, just with so many, uh, unfortunate injuries that have happened during the season, but still a lot of, uh, I'm sure fun to watch that. So I'll be checking both those out. Mm-hmm. So let's get back to some of the emails, but Marcus, thank you so much for the email. And uh, we've got another one here from, uh, let's see here, longtime co-host, second time emailer. Huh. Hey guys, what a great tour. I'm going to give it nine out of 10 stars. Got to save the top step for 89, no matter what. My question, <laughs> this year we've had the first Ecuadorian Juro winner, the first Colombian tour winner. So who's going to win the Vuelta? Well, obviously Andre Amador from Costa Rica, but anyway... <laughs> If this pattern holds, it's got to be a new nation and a first-time GC winner, so guess it's time to start digging deep into team rosters. No chance for Nairo. Sorry, Tim. And no chance for Steven Kreiswick. Sorry, Spencer. So who's it going to be? Okay, good luck pulling some names. 
So guys, that was from Matt Allen. Uh, Thanks, sounds Matt. like a cool, handsome dude. With attitude. <laughs> I'm going to go with Andre Amador, who's All just right. going to... Maybe make the team roster. Uh, Spencer, Grand Tour winner. Has Canada had one before? Uh, yeah. Did Steve Bauer win a Grand Tour? Um, I thought he did. I don't know if he did. Um, I was, you know, I'm. I don't know. I don't know who's out there who could who could pull this off. Um, I don't think Amador is going to do it. I tell you that yeah. much. Um, does Uruguay have a a, a racer in the peloton? Um, <laughs> Argentina? Are we looking the wrong? Are we looking at the wrong? Are we, should we just skip South America and Central America and just go to, um, you know, like? Ha, do we know if there's been like an Australian winner of the Vuelta? Of right. of any Grand Tour, really? I mean, I can't think of one. <laughs> nobody comes to mind. <laughs> yeah, nobody. Mm. Nobody from a race we talked about earlier. No. Mm. No. 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 Well, no. I mean, has he ever? <laughs> an Australian has never won the Vuelta, though. Uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like, so I looked, I looked through before before I wrote it, but no. So in no. this, Cadell Evans so in this email, Logan, are we looking grave. for a first time national winner of? Yeah, you got have Volta, a first, or are you looking for a first time national winner of a Grand Tour? Sorry if I. No, it's just got to be no, because Colombians have won Grand Tour, so I think that okay. So far this year, we just have each race. It's someone who's never won a Grand Tour. And and that nation has never won that Grand Tour. That's the only. That's, that's what we got going so far. So it's got to be. So yeah, an Australian, I guess, because I can't think so, of an Australian that's won so, the Volta unless I'm totally forgetting somebody. So Australia may be the country that we have to go with because we got Great Britain, Colombia. But who's going to win from Australia? Spain. Uh, Richie Port. Yeah, I guess maybe. <laughs> um, one of the Yates brothers. They're probably from uh, Australia. They're probably not from Australia. <laughs> What if losing, I know they're not losing that that that, that yeah, iTunes it is the death of Great Britain cycling. Great Britain right now. Um, you, yeah, I guess this is a pretty good question. I'll, I'll just go with the uh, Amador just coming out of left field. Uh, I think that this could be the opportunity for a uh, for greatness. It's <laughs> fair. All right, That's good. I don't have an answer to my own question because I thought you guys would read it when I wasn't here. So I was just setting you up for failure, but now I'm here to fail myself. Hey guys. Yeah. Last weekend, my wife and I rode our bikes across the Isle of Wight in the UK. Little guy, I did a little bit of research on this, Spencer, as well. Isle of mm-hmm. Wight, it's just uh, just outside of Southampton. Now, let's say that you are going to go to the Isle of Wight. Mm-hmm. Um, I've done a little bit of research because uh, for those of our listeners in Great Britain, things to do in Isle of Wight, um, the 10 most popular things to do. I'm just going to parse this down. So okay. if you're going to Isle of Wight, you know, it seems like there's some pretty good roads to ride. Um the, the one of the most uh, popular things is the Isle of Wight coastal footpath. Just some great uh, pictures as, as you're going around. But number two on the list is hover travel. Um, you can take a hovercraft to the Isle of Wight or off the Isle of Wight. I I've never been on a hovercraft, so I I wouldn't. I mean, I'm I'm into that idea. Huh. Um, but I'm a little disappointed that number ten on the list is the Haven Falconry. I would think a falconry would definitely be a top three uh, podium um, spot, oh, especially sure. in, uh, in an island off of England. How are they going to get the messages from the island back to the mainland? <laughs> I mean, certainly not email. It's like, we, no. we've already solved this problem. They, they, yeah. Okay. Anyways, my wife is kind of new to riding in the countryside. So before we left, I mentioned if you see another cyclist, make sure you give them a wave. It's pretty important. A few KMs miles kilometers into our ride we were overtaken by a group 10 strong on a club ride they shall remain nameless this is where um you know i'm a little disagreement i think we need to call them out but they did not wave Mm. and i don't want to tar the whole club but they did not wave five kilometers later having passed through some towns we were overtaken again by the same group despite our waves for the second time nothing back then again for a third time, the group passes us, and only after a loud mourning for me did they acknowledge us. Now, it may have been the sight of my wife on our 1980s Peugeot town bike with mustache bars and a M- Mape jersey that threw them, but three times? Come on. No one's too cool to wave. That's brutal. Yeah, That's brutal. Really brutal. Three times. And shout out. She had, she had a, uh, a Mape jersey on, and I mean, man, that's an automatic wave right there. 
That's I'm wondering. I mean, you know, they're part of the club, right? They're part of the tribe. Like, if you're wearing a, yeah, if you're wearing that jersey, that's a guaranteed wave. Yeah, it should be. Also on a Peugeot with uh, mustache bars. Oh, that's right up the little guy's alley. Little guy would probably turn around to just go ride next to it and stare and just ask a ton of questions about the bike. Mm. So I don't want to be that guy, but this club needs calling out and step up their wave game big time. Other than those guys, plenty of waves and great riding on the Isle of Wight on their way to the falconry, I suppose. Keep up the good work on the pod. Cheers, Andy Parsons. Thanks for the email, Andy. So great to hear from you. And uh, with that, guys, we are closing the Slow Ride Podcast mailbag. Um Tim, one quick question. Isla, right? Isla White, sorry. Um, you got the Wikipedia page up there because I'm curious what the population is on that island or if it's like a, a destination that that uh, club would take the ferry across and, and go for a nice ride out there or because it can't be the that population's big. population's 140K. Okay, so that's... That's pretty... It's decent. It's pretty big. But not big enough that our one K our one UK listener can't go out there and find out who these people were and, and talk to the shop and be like, Hey, find everyone, track them down. <laughs> yeah. Our listeners it, have we, a very specific set of skills. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We need to find out who this club is. So well, you let us know. Somebody just needs to, here's what we do. I'm going to write a note to the bike shop of the club. Say, Hey, just want to point out, I think your club riders, Whoever's the manager of the club or whatever needs to sit down, talk to uh, talk to everybody, make sure they they know that they're expected to wave. We roll that note up, we tie it with a, a little ribbon, we put a nice uh, seal on there um, with our crest, a nice bottle. We give it to the falcon, and we send it to the bike shop. It's perfect. Ah, uh, that's a good idea. I kind of like. It. Now, oh, man, I was thinking that you were going to throw the bottle. I forgot about the falconry, but um, yeah. so guys. With the closure of the mailbag, there's a couple more things that I do want to get to. Okay. Of course, one of them is the Classico San Sebastian. Little guy, you are our expert here, but the only reason I really wanted to talk about it. Oh, this is why we call it that, Little Guy. I forgot is that about that. Dylan Toons had to miss the classic after needing 15 stitches in a head wound caused by an accident when driving his tractor. I didn't know that. What is he yeah. doing? He suffered a facial wound. 15 stitches little guy mm-hmm. Tractors are we do not know what he was doing with his tractor but it is our job as the arbiters of awesomeness and rumors that is the slow ride podcast what do you think he was doing on his tractor to get 15 stitches in the forehead that is an amazing accomplishment do you I think mean, he drove it into a wall I, uh, I well, he wasn't wearing his fell, helmet fell off it maybe he uh was trying to attach something to the uh to the uh, PTO or whatever, and you got you got that thing jamming up yeah, in the face. Could be. I'm really bummed by this, could but be, uh... on the plus side, if he got 15 stitches to his head and he would have won the Classico San Sebastian, he would have gotten some awesome headwear. <laughs> yes. So then you wouldn't be able to see the stitches. Uh, yeah. That's true. That's true. Maybe he was he was driving his tractor over to Pino's to help Pino out since Pino's got that leg injury. Help him with his donkeys. Does he have donkeys? Is that his thing? <laughs> I think it's donkeys that Pino has. So he's probably going over to Pino's to help him with the donkeys. You know, just like, that's what Peloton Pals are for, you know? Coming that's true. Over now, to I like that. Little guy, why should I care about the San Sebastian Classic if Bauke Malima is not winning it? And well, the hat. he got top 10, so you still get some Bauke action if you go back and watch the highlights. Like fifth place, Would you, yeah. would you fifth, say he uh, quietly got a fifth place? <laughs> Well, it's kind of, yeah, you made it in that move, and then you're like, it's going to come down to a sprint for that 2 through 10 or whatever, and you're like, well, he's not going to win that. You should care because uh, while Vanderpool was off showing everybody that he's going to rule cycling in the mountain bike world or wherever he shows up, a uh, little child, small kid, should be a junior, Remco, just destroyed the entire peloton. And he's only 19. Only 19, and he did it uh, for a little while with a friend of the show, uh, Tom's. So it was super exciting, but also kind of heartbreaking, because I got to admit, I didn't believe that Tom's was going to be able to hang with him on that climb the whole way up. <laughs> and oh. it, was, yeah, it, was, it, was, it was hard. I was just waiting for it. But they put in, Tom's puts in a great attack with like 20K to go, and 
I'm sure his heart sank a little bit when he looked over his shoulder and they, and Remco came across because he was like, oh crap, this is going to be fast. And it was. They got a huge gap and they made it over the last climb almost. Tom's got, but Tom's still hung in and, and finished in that second group basically. So he, he did a hell of a ride. He still got a good result. So yeah. it was a great finish. It's exciting. It also looks like if we're ever going to go to a race in Europe, I know we always talk like we should go to Flanders or we should go to Roubaix, but I think this San Sebastian will be, the atmosphere looks great and it looks beautiful. I mean, it just looks like if you wanted to go on a vacation and take in a bike race, but also yeah. bring your uh, significant other that couldn't care less about bike racing with you, but you also wanted to see all the big names in cycling I think this should be your destination race because you can pass it off that you just are setting up this beautiful Spanish beach holiday. And then you're like, Oh, and by the way, one day, uh, Saturday, I've got to go up, up on the mountain and run around and scream and shoot flares off and stuff and get drunk. Um, <laughs> uh-huh. and, you- and they're like, cool. I'm going to be at the beach. Do you think San Sebastian has a, a chance to, to become the seventh classic or the seventh monument in cycling after, um, you know, Japan cup, Paris, Roubaix, Liège, tour of Flanders, Lombardia. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> uh the, the first yeah. one. Uh, yeah. That other it's one. A, it's a great race. I think it's a fun race, especially because you got everyone coming out of the tour with weird, weird amounts of form, you know, <laughs> Do you, okay, I'm just gonna throw this out there. What do you guys think of starting to do our research? Because like, obviously, I'm I just want to keep talking nonstop about the hat that the winner gets at this race because yeah. it's what makes the whole event. Do you, are there enough podium, like podium uh, accoutrements, podium uh, enhancements? to do a top corner draft corner of like greatest things that also are on the final podium, i.e. the trident for winning Torino Andriatico. Like that's like that, like that is a great photo. Whoever wins the trident. Yeah. This hat, like, w- yeah, are there enough? There. Like, w- like what's, what's some of the best headwear? I mean, this has to be number one for headwear, right? I can't think of any other headwear that if there is, it doesn't come close. I mean, you get the donkey at KBK. You get the little pig at uh, um, Trobro Leon. I'm just trying to think of like, I mean, there's some pretty good ideas. So if anyone has some suggestions on what could possibly, that maybe we don't know about, besides little guy's famous podium bucket, um, I would be interested in, why don't you email us at the slow ride podcast at gmail.com or maybe hit us up at the slow ride pod on Facebook and Twitter. Um, that would be uh, fantastic. Yeah. Mm. Um, also, I, I forgot to mention this. Um, we did uh, run a 16th place contest for the Alma GP. Oh, yeah. Um, from a friend of the pod, Brian Hancock. Uh. And Brian did a great job uh, for it. So we had some entrance into who was going to get 16th place on the 16th stage. But naturally, four people were in the ballpark of winning. Okay. Um, we'd like to thank Chris Sumner, uh, Andy Richardson, of course, Douglas Sniper, always crushing it, but he only lives a few miles away in Alma. So, so, so you don't think anywhere. he deserves a, a, a free hotel is what you're saying. Yeah, Doug, you already are the free hotel <laughs> <laughs> if we show up to this yeah. thing. So I think we got to give it up to friend of the podcast, longtime European French correspondent of the podcast, Ruby Roubaix. So Ruby, if you were able to make it to the center of Michigan for the Alma GP in September, you have yourself a free race entry and hotel in the lovely town. Contact the chamber of commerce. I'm sure they can let you know on other things to do on September 7th at the sixth annual Avalon pontoons, Alma grand prix of cyclocross and five K trail run in Alma, Michigan. Amazing. Congratulations so guys. Yeah. Little guy. It was absolutely fantastic having you back on the pod. Good to be yeah. back. Much more to discuss, oh, I have but more. Spencer, you have a little bit of homework that I know you wanted us to talk about um, that has to do with watching some crit racing, what we always cared about. Oh, I've got a couple of things. Uh, I just thought of another thing I want to bring up, but yeah, uh, thank you for reminding me about this. 
I have been uh, laid up uh, at home, stuck on the couch for the last week. Um, part of the reason why we didn't have a podcast last week, you were traveling, I was laid up out of commission. Um, but I've been watching a lot of YouTube and uh, I've discovered uh, some new bike racing on there that I wasn't aware of previously that is awesome. And if you guys like crits, you should be watching it too. Um, it is uh, the the Legion of uh, Los Angeles team uh, produces these uh, videos um, that they post up on YouTube about their about their crits, and it's it's in uh, in race footage. Like they've got mm-hmm. probably I don't know three or four guys on the team, all with front and rear facing uh, cameras that they are filming every bit of the action, and you can hear the the kind of vocalization and the the um, communication that they're having in their lead out trains. And this is uh Justin Williams, uh national crit champion, Corey Williams. So you can hear them talking about it. Oh yeah. 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 Are they talking about closing the door and things like that? Oh, or they, like, yeah, absolutely. Like, no, where, where are they picking up the audio? Sorry about this. Is it just through the GoPro or do they, yeah. or they also got lapel mics? No, no, just through the, okay. just through the GoPros or whatever they have. Um, so it's not great, but you can hear it's it. It's gotta be awesome though. It's, it's very good. And they are, so extremely dialed at how to run the front of a race. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if guys are attacking or other lead out trains are trying to come up the side. It is just incredible to watch, uh, from within the Peloton, how, how that stuff works. And, uh, okay. it, it's very, very good. So I, I don't want to go on too long about it. You can just, they've got a ton of videos up there. Um, so it's the Legion of Los Angeles. Yeah, that that's the team. I was um, going to pull up the actual YouTube uh, channel name, but but uh, I don't have it directly. In I'm sure we can find it, but yeah. I want to go see some crit race in Legion of Los Angeles, the Justin Williams team, um, some of the coolest kits currently in the Peloton. Yeah, no, the, uh, the YouTube channel name is Nation's Number One Beast. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Nation's number one, one is uh, the digit one. Uh, Nation's number one beast is the channel. All the uh, all the crit uh, racing is up there. It's it's fantastic. Check it out. Um, but another thing that I was reminded of, and we only have a, a couple minutes left before we get to wrap this podcast up, but did you guys see the news that uh, Sir Bradley Wiggins is going to have a show on Comedy Central? <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> so... I don't know if you saw him uh, from the back of the motorbike during the Tour de France. Uh, pretty, pretty good. I got to say, I, I haven't been the biggest Wiggins fan uh, over the course of his career, but he's very good on the back of a motorcycle and uh, describing the race. Um, and uh, I apparently did such a good job that uh, somebody extended him an offer to uh, do a little show on Comedy Central. No details about what that's going to be like. Uh, but uh, <laughs> okay. I'm expecting big things. That's bonkers, and I will watch that. I wonder how many people were actually watching here in America the Eurosport coverage of um, the tour. I'm kind of curious on that. I don't know. Just, but, like now that it's pretty easy to get the NBC Sports, like yeah. are, how many people do you think are still going the pirate feed route? Uh, Out of curiosity. Probably like, a good majority still. I think you think so. <laughs> that flow bikes in the in the in the um the NBC Sports like it's not. It's cheap, but it's not cheap enough. You know, like okay. there's a, Let, there's let's, a, let's, let's just say there's a lot of collegiate racers out there. There's a lot of collegiate racers, but yeah. how many, okay. We know that there's VPNs. Yeah. I just, I want a ballpark number. Let's just throw it out there. Do you think it's over a hundred thousand people are watching the Eurosport feed? Oh, I have I'm not going to pick a number like that. I have no idea. Um, you think a hundred thousand people watch the tour anymore? That's what I want to know. Like really I'm how, gonna, va- like we really dissect this. I'm going to say but, 50 to 60% of people are still watching pirate feeds. Really, I would. I think. I think <laughs> wow, <laughs> maybe they should just. Anyway, make there are uh, compilations of uh, of Wiggins on the back of the bike doing yeah. his commentary that you can find on YouTube and, and other places that aren't pirate feeds. Um, <laughs> it's pretty good. He's joking with guys in the peloton. He's like, uh, it's worth watching. Uh, he did a good job, so you know I'll give him the kudos where he deserves it. And uh, I don't know. Well, guys. This has been an absolute classic banger. Little guy is back on the pod. Stoked to have you here. A toast of champagne to you. But little guy, watch out. I will attack you on the final stage of the Tour de France. I don't Uh, doubt it. Let's give a uh, quick shout 
to all of the listeners and supporters of the Wide Angle Podium Network. Head on over to WideAnglePodium.com to find out how you can support, support independent cycling media. I'd like to thank Whoop for their continued support. Use the code SLOWRIDE at checkout to save 15%. We'd also like to thank Health IQ. Go to HealthIQ.com slash WAP. And Grimper Brothers for their continued support. WideAnglePodium.com slash coffee. And with that, this is Tim in Orlando, Florida. This is Matt in Minneapolis. I think I just did a podcast. And this is Spencer in Boston, reminding you to always wave at all your fellow cyclists that you see out on the road. The Slow Ride Podcast. Bikes, advice, and rumors straight from the source. TheSlowRidePodcast.com and on Twitter at TheSlowRidePod. Thank <laughs> you.